Father, we pray before we enter into the Word and the message night to night about faith and how it's released and how it's used. And I'm looking to you, greater one, that dwells within me. I am looking to you for every gift, every spiritual endowment necessary, every anointing to carry out what you have called and anointed me to do. And I'm asking you, sir, that I speak these words accurately and cause the people to hear it equally as accurately, and we'll hear from heaven. Words that move heaven on the earth in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Glory to God. Open your Bibles with me tonight. Go back to the book of Mark, of course. And we'll, we'll read it from the very beginning of Mark 11, 22 through 25, Jesus' classic teaching on the subject of faith in the, in the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus said, have faith in God, or have the faith of God, the cross references. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, in the inner man. Peter called it the hidden man of the heart. He's not talking about your, your physical heart, your blood pump. There, there, you, you, you know, whosoever shall not doubt in his liver. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the spirit man, the inner man. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He will have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say, now Jesus put forth the absolute law of faith. It's a whosoever thing. And then he immediately used it. Therefore I say, Did you catch that? Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, begin to believe. That's when you exercise your faith. That's when you begin to say it's mine. The old idea, well, uh, I really don't know if it's God's will to heal me or not, so I'll just pray and ask him to, and if he doesn't, well, I don't guess it's his will. Now, the writers and translators of the King James Bible did their very best to get over to us by using the word testament instead of covenant. Now, I remember how thrilled I was. I didn't know testament meant covenant. When I first uh, went to Old Roberts University, I was scripturally literate, I didn't understand that. And then I saw that and I thought, dear Lord, 
And, and my background being Native American, I, I, man, I got excited over this. It's a blood covenant. Man, oh man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my blood. He's my blood brother, man. He is my blood brother. Are you listening to me? But now let's don't get on the ditch on that side and forget about Testament. Look it up in the regular dictionary and see what it says. Just happened to have. <laughs> Testament. Law. A will especially one that relates to the disposition of one's personal property. The will. God wrote his will. Amen. I saw this years ago and I let it slip. And then Pastor George picked up on it. Amen. Stand up, George. Let everybody see how sharp you are. George. And Miss Kelly, would you stand up, Kelly? Thank you, Lord. And George picked up on that. God wrote his will, particularly now they had an Old Testament and then they upgraded it to a second testament or a new will. Amen. The first will promised Jesus, the second will he came. He wrote his own will. Now, let me ask you. When when did I receive A.W. Copeland, Aubrey Wayne Copeland's will. He left a will. When did I get what my dad left? When he died or when I die and go to heaven where he is? Boy, that's really dumb. <laughs> but it's because of, of just brainwashing old, old nasty religion that just didn't believe hardly anything. Famous, some churches is famous for believing nothing. Just argue with you about everything. <laughs> well, I just don't know where it's his will or not. Well, then he ought not put it in his will. He's the only man I know of that wrote his will, died, came back to probate his own will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who didn't take long to preach me happy. Glory to God. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, that's when you begin believing, not after you see it, not after you feel it, not after you wander around about it for another two or three years. No, you find the answer to the prayer before you ever pray the prayer. Let the Word of God be the answer to your prayer life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't just start making up stuff. <laughs> all, all the promises of God in Him are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? No, did you hear what the Bible just said? In Him, it's not well. It's, it sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's we don't know. And it's maybe wait a while. Words just fail me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
man, I've, I've said some of that, some of those idiot isms myself until I learned a whole lot better. This word, let the, let the word of God fight its own fight. It is the sword of the spirit. Let it fight its own fight. Amen. The battle is the Lord's, not yours and mine. The battle's already won. The victory's already ours. Hallelujah. So we begin to shout the victory. Yeah, but I don't feel. Well, good. Just go sit down and feel something. (laughs) Feelings will lie to you. I absolutely could care less what my feelings say. Now, don't misunderstand me. There are times and should be times when the feelings are wonderful, glory to God, particularly in praise and worship where you just get over into his presence and you praise God long enough and the spirit of worship comes and in that spirit, the glory falls and in his presence, you just don't want to leave and you don't know whether to laugh or cry. And it's just so wonderful. When we pray, we enter into his presence. And when we praise and worship and give thanks, he enters into ours. And it just becomes so, I've learned so much from my daughter Kelly out from then. And I'm learning more, praise God. Your kids will teach you something if you'll listen. Amen. Well, they're supposed to be smarter than you. Amen. Gloria is smarter than me. And Gloria and I uh, put that together. So <laughs> she got her mother's brains and her good looks. Bless her, darling. Hard <laughs> eye. Oh, she's glad she looked like her mother. Anyway. <laughs> Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have. Ah, but when you stand praying, forgive. It's all part of the same prayer. And it's just as much a spiritual law as these other two verses, because faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. It just won't. And here again, get away from the feeling syndrome. Brother Copeland, you don't know what they did to me. No, I don't know what they did to you, darling. But uh, it don't matter. They didn't kill you. If they'd have had the other side of that, it would have been stunning. You'd have been a martyr. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, brother, go ahead, don't talk like that. Well, how you want me to talk? You want me to frown up and get sharp pushed like you? No, I'm not going there. Thank you. The joy of the Lord and a merry heart does good like a medicine. Glory to God. Take your medicine. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care if they accused you of 1,400 things that you ever did and they just got all kinds of problem, cost you your job and everything else. I'm telling you, you're a soldier in the army of the Lord and you just come up before him, sir, permission to forgive that person now, sir. He'll say, you have permission. I forgive them. Thank you, sir, very much. They're forgiven. <laughs> Nobody said you had to feel good about it, but God said you have to do it. Why? If you don't forgive, he can't bless you. And he's all about blessing you. He's all about that. He's all about providing all your needs. He's all about providing all your wants. Oh, he's the Lord, my shepherd, and I shall not want. I shall not lack. Glory to God. No, oh, he causes me, he leads me beside the still waters and, it, and into green pastures so he can restore my soul. Hallelujah. Why? Because your soul gets all beat up, your mind, your will, your emotions, you get all beat up out there. He's got some green pastures for you, sweetheart. Oh, he's got some still water waiting on you. Get in that prayer room and say, Lord, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord and I have it in my heart to be obedient to your commands and I forgive if I have all against any and if I have anybody in there that I don't remember, you deal with me about it. I'll take care of business here. It's impossible to please God without faith. It is 
impossible to please anybody without faith. You can't do it. Dr. Avery, you can't do it. Uh, Dr. Avery, I just really appreciate you, sir. And I think you're just an amazing man. I just don't believe nothing you say. (laughs) What? What did I do? (laughs) See, that is, try that on your wife sometime and see where that gets you. (laughs) I love you, darling. I just don't believe nothing you say. (laughs) It's impossible to please anybody with that faith. But now think about this. Think about the system here. Why is this so important? Faith works by love. Amen. 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 Therefore, it is of faith so that it might be by grace. Oh, I can't, I cannot afford, I can't afford to be operating without grace. Now think about the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Even though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love. And say nothing about feeling it. Agape, not filial. Agape. Agape love is is love on purpose, whether you feel like it or not. Amen. 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 It is by agape that it might be by grace that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love, I'm just a lot of noise. Going through all emotions. Oh, I'm just praising and worshiping. I got this big grin on my face. You ain't nothing but a lot of noise. Just because you refuse to give, forgive very dangerous, extremely dangerous situation. This includes politicians. Now I'm going to say this to you. You better vote in faith and you better vote. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not worth your American salt if you don't vote. That, hey, if you honestly believe and you pray before you vote and you honestly believe that you're voting, you vote your heart, not your grandma. You listen to God. You honestly believe that you voted the way the Lord showed you to vote. Even if your side lost, you get credit for the win. Praise God. You get credit because you listen to God. But then after that, don't gripe and bellyache because your side lost. <laughs> Let's say, I heard some guy talking about, ah, I'll pray for the office. I can't pray for the man. Well, you're a liar. <laughs> can't pray for the man. You're just full of bull, that's all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm very serious about this. I'm very passionate about my country. Praise God. I just wished I was young enough to go to war, you know. Come. You understand where I'm coming from now? And so we have an election coming up. Listen and pray in the spirit. Listen, listen, listen. Listen and pray, listen and pray, listen and pray, listen and pray. Find out. Well, I ain't gonna vote for neither one of them. Well, you just voted for the wrong one. Amen. Amen. 
Because if you didn't vote, you voted for the loser. And for now, that's all I'm going to say about that, I think. <laughs> but hey, I'm going to tell you something else. No, all of this has to do, that all of this has to do with the world of faith. Now, because of the faith of our forefathers, we live in the most, the, the most dynamic nation that's ever existed on the face of the earth. And because of that, because of that, we need to become very objective about it. We need to help one another, glory to God. And I'm not going to tell you uh, for whom to vote. I would never do that. Praise God. I don't, in, but I'll pray with you about it. And you pray with me about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's the same thing about talking about the word of God. You may see the word of faith one way and I see it another. Don't get mad at me over it. I didn't write this. I wish I had. <laughs> I just work here. You understand? <laughs> I've had a lot, I got a lot of job security. <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. But let me tell you how to get, and let me tell you how to be wealthy. Find out exactly what God wants you to do exactly, and then go do it for 53 years, and you, whoa. Yeah. You can have a big house and a big car and whatever else you want, because He'll prosper you. Yeah. Amen. He'll prosper Amen. you. But you have to listen, and you have to obey Him, and you have to walk in the truth of it. And when he says, first of all, pray for all men, kings, and all that are in authority that the church live in peace, honesty, and godliness, he means it when he said it. Yes. Amen. Amen. For this is good in the sight of God, our Savior, who would I have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There's one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, glory to God, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified of in due time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that means that you pray for the president, the vice president, you pray for everybody in the Congress, everybody in, this, in the Senate, everybody in the House, glory to God. You pray for them and pray for the ones that you don't like the most. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't care what you want to do. I just quoted 1 Timothy chapter two. Is that in the Bible? Then do it. Glory to God. It's not in there just to hold the pages up. Do it and do it in faith. And do it every day. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.